right, folks, we're waiting for a moment, and here we go. All right, folks, I think this is going to be going live in just a few moments. I'm just waiting for it to catch up, and once it does, I'm going to go forward. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone is able to see this. I was just trying to uh, tape it before, and for some reason, it wasn't going through. Uh, I've been having a lot of problems with Facebook for a while now. So I just want to make sure that everyone's able to see this. Uh, and bear with me as I'm checking, checking. Okay. So here we go. Hey, everyone. So I'm, I'm glad to be here with you. And oops, there we go. Here we go. Uh, I'm glad to be here with you, everybody. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once, and it's one thing too many. Uh, I'm talking with you today because it, there's something that's just come out. A lot of people may have been hearing about it. Uh, I've just heard about it and trying to check it out. And it's called Operation Crush COVID. And it's about, obviously, the coronavirus and how it's been affecting us all and, and how everyone's dealing with this. And... It's a big deal, and I hope I, you know, people, let me know what you think about this as we go. But I, I, I don't know, it's too much. You know, I've been trying to be very positive throughout this entire event. I've been trying to keep a very positive outlook. I, you know, mental health is number one issue. I've been talking about that a lot and trying to pe let people know about programs for that uh, and looking out for our neighbors. I know domestic abuse and alcohol abuse and drug abuse. These are major issues, and I've been trying to talk very positively, letting people know that there are options out there that you can be okay, that we're going to be okay together. And I, I've been staying away from politics. Not that there aren't issues out there. I mean, you know, there's Bernie Sanders and he's out of the race and there's things like Sheldon Silver's finally going to jail. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on in the world that I would love to talk about. It's not the time for the politics, but I have to tell you, this has got me. This has got me. I, I just don't know what to say about this. It, op, cr, Operation Crush COVID is, is I got to talk about it. I need to let off the steam about this. Now, for people who don't know what this is, Broome County Executive Jason Garnar has made the announcement as of today that because of the coronavirus, people are only allowed, in Broome County, are only allowed to go out to the park, to play golf, uh, to go shopping on the same date as the year they were born. So in other words, uh, if you're born in 1968, you can go out on even numbered days. If you happen to be born on odd number years, 1967 as an example, you can only go out on odd number days. And I have a problem with that. I have a major problem with that. Look, we've all been locked into our houses now, what, three weeks, three and a half. Um, we've all not been able to go out. And we've done this together. We've done this together because we want everyone to be okay. We want to take care of everyone that we can. We want to make sure that everyone is going to survive. And you know what? We have done that. We have put every business at risk. We've isolated ourselves. We've... we've Put, lots of people are going through trauma over this. And you know what? We have succeeded because in Broome County, there have been six deaths. And that is sad. And I am sorry to hear that. It is not a pleasant thing to say there have been six people who have died. And that, but I can say there's been 484 people who have tested negative for coronavirus. There are 193,000 people in Broome County. And 73 active cases exist. We have successfully, together, had 99.999% beaten the coronavirus, COVID-19. And I believe we will continue to get that kind of success. We are defeating this. It is not in all the nursing homes. We are beating the COVID virus. And as a state, 
New York has done pretty well. Yes, it's the one of the, I think the fourth largest number of fatalities in the world, but out of 8 million people in very little space stacked on top of each other, we can see outside of New York City, the numbers are minuscule. In a state of 18 million people, 8 million people in New York City alone, we've beaten this. 6,268 fatalities, which are COVID and or COVID related. And for those who've been talking like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that it's, well, it's race-based, that this virus is somehow looking for people based on their race. No, it's not. You know, in, in outside of New York City, it's 62% is white, 18% black, and 14% Hispanic. And yes, it, 18% black is double the population. But then again, we have a lot of the black community and the Hispanic community are in smaller communities, not in isolated homes in upstate New York. But if you look at New York City itself, the densest population, well, you're looking at 28% of the population have been affected by COVID. That's versus 27 for the white population and 34% for Hispanics. Men are at risk, 61%. Those who are 50 and older, including myself, are in the top 70% most at risk. 50% of those are 70 and older. And almost all of the cases, 86.5% are all people who have a pre-existing condition. And these are all the people that we need to protect, that we need to take care of. That's why we went into isolation, to make sure that those people, those who are 50 and older, those who are men, those who have pre-existing immunity issues, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer treatments, that they're going to survive. And I can say as a community here in Broome County, we have been successful. 193,000 people have successfully limited the coronavirus to six deaths. We've done exceptionally well. By isolating ourselves, limiting our ability to come outside to go shopping, to interact with each other, to live in our homes, to not even work. And financially, the repercussions of this are going to be huge. And I say all of that to bring me back to the fact that right now, Crush COVID says, that's not good enough. You're in isolation. You're a prisoner in your home. You can only go out every other day, maybe. Let me ask you, what's gonna happen If I go out tomorrow, I just had my birthday on Monday, 52 years old, 1968 is my birth year. What happens if I go out tomorrow, April 9th, to go out and get food because I'm out of food? You know, my refrigerator breaks down and I need to get food tomorrow. What happens? What if I need to get out of my house because I've been stuck here for three and a half weeks and I need to get out and walk in a park or play golf to be outside? What happens? Am I going to get arrested? Is the fact that already Governor Cuomo has said that I'm going to get a thousand dollar fine if we break curfew in New York State? Does that mean that in Broome County, if you break this curfew, if you break this crush COVID authorization, that you're going to find a thousand dollars and have a financial burden that's increased even more than the financial burden we've already had? Now, let me be very clear. I don't think that County Executive Jason Garnar is doing this maliciously. I don't think he has a bad intention in his heart. I don't believe that's the case. I believe he is trying to do everything he can to protect everyone. He, like I, do not want to see seven deaths in Broome County because of COVID-19. I believe he is trying to make sure everyone is going to be safe. I believe he is looking out for the public health. And I commend him for trying to do everything he can towards that end. Just like Binghamton Mayor Rich David has gone and done everything he can. And Mayor Demi and Johnson City and all of the other cities. I think everyone in government right now is working hard to make sure we are all going to be okay. And I commend them for that. But I think we've 
gone too far. I think, I think we've gone too far before, but this is too much to me. This is like saying you're a prisoner in your home. This is a, a solitary confinement. This is saying that you're stuck in your house and you can't get out. That you're only allowed out when the government is saying you're allowed out. And even if you're taking every precaution, you're wearing masks, you're wearing gloves, you're keeping social distance of six feet, you're doing all the things that you can to protect other people, but still living a life, that's not enough. Now you need the approval of the government to be outside. That seems like an overreach. It seems too much. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I could be very wrong about this. You can tell me that you're missing the point. You're missing the, the, the sacrifice. And I think we're all sacrificing. I have no doubt we are all sacrificing here. But I think we've, this is too much. Oops, hang on. Sorry. Um, I think this is too much. I think we've gone too far. I do not see, this isn't the Black Plague. This isn't that scenario. We are successfully beating this. We have been working as a community together, sacrificing as a community together, and we are successfully beating this thing. But I don't know that this is the right thing. I don't know that, uh, I don't know who Executive Garnar spoke with about this. He didn't speak to the public about it. And I'm sure there may be health officials who say, you know, maybe this is a good idea. Maybe we're going to see this happen. I mean, California, some counties in California just said that you can't go out to the state parks. You can't go out in public in the parks. Yes, there are many parts of the country that are making very extreme choices. But I don't know that they are good choices. I don't know that this is a positive thing. I don't know that the freedoms that we have, that we've given up voluntarily, that this should be another one we should give. And I don't know that the county has the right to do this to us. Not, not when we're 99.999 successful. That 99% of us are going to survive this without question. And that we are going, we are protecting those who are at risk. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. And I want to hear what you think. I want to hear what you feel. Yeah, this is me letting out my steam. This is me saying, hey, I, I, I can't go outside and talk to somebody about this. I can't go down the street and talk to my buddies. I can't go over to my friend's house or to a bar or at work and say, hey, you know, I think this is a good idea, bad idea, whatever. I can't go over to Jason's house and speak with him about this. So here I am. I'm on social media and I'm talking with you. Maybe you think I'm right. Maybe you think I'm wrong. But we have to let it, we have to talk. We have to communicate. We have to share. And I want to share that I think this is too much. That this has gone too far. That, that no, I don't believe that people should be isolated to every other day. And I want to know what happens if you do. What happens if you go out on a day you're not supposed to be out? Especially if you need to. Whether it's for your own mental health or whether it's because of some other need or necessity. What happens if you go out? Is the state going to have the police? Does, does the county want to stop people and have their IDs checked to find out whether or not you are authorized to be able to go out of your own home? Is that what's going to happen? Are you going to, are the police going to have to stop each and every person who's outside for whatever reason and say, okay, show me your ID do you have authorization to be out today? And what happens if you aren't? That's a serious question. It's a serious issue. I understand this is a serious event, but that's a serious question. And we need to ask that question. What happens? What will the government do to us? There are limits on what the government should be allowed to do. There are limits on what we should allow the government to decide is okay for us. And I understand the government wants to protect us. People are trying to protect us. 
And they're going through every extreme they can to make sure we're going to be as okay as we can be. And I respect what Executive Gunnar is doing for that. But I don't agree. I don't think this crush COVID is right. I don't think it's the right answer. But maybe I'm wrong. I want to hear what you guys think. I want to hear what you feel. I want to hear your thoughts on it. Does it make sense? Is it, do we need to go to that next extreme now that we've shut down businesses, we've shut down restaurants, we've shut down reasons for people to be outside, we've eliminated almost any interaction socially. Do we now need to go one more step and say you can only go outside when the government says it's your day, it's your time, you're now authorized to go out there. Mind you, you can't go out all day. You're only able to go out until 8 o'clock at night, and then you have to be home. Do we need to do this? I don't know. But I wanted to get this off my shoulders. I wanted to get this off of my back. I wanted to share this with everyone. And maybe it's, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a horrible idea. Maybe I shouldn't even say it. But I've never been one to hold silent. Maybe the executive governor can explain this to me. I hope he can. Maybe someone else can explain to me. I understand. We're protecting those who are 70 and older. We're protecting men. We're protecting those with pre-existing conditions that put them at risk. I get it. And we've been protecting those people for weeks, and I continue to say, let's continue to protect them. But I don't think we need to keep going forward to do that. I don't think we need to do more than we've done already to do that. We've already closed down the businesses. Many of them will not reopen. We've already gone out and we've decided to uh, isolate people and social distance and keep ourselves mostly locked in our homes. We've already done it all. Why do we have to go this step further? We're at 99.999% successful. Why are we doing this extra step? Why are we doing that now? I don't know. It, it, it's too much for me. It, it's, it's aggravating to me. And people are going to say, well, Mike, are you going to do it? Are you going to, are you going to do this? I don't know. Seriously, folks, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I want to hear what everyone else is thinking about this. I want to hear how everyone else feels about this. Because maybe I'm completely off. Whoops. Uh, maybe I'm completely off base here. Uh, maybe I just don't get it. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, there's 73 active cases out of 193,000 people. There's been six deaths out of 193,000 people. 14 people have recovered. 484 people are negative. The positive is that we are incredibly successful against coronavirus and we will continue to be successful as a community up until April 29th and beyond as we get through this and get back to our normal lives sometime in June. We're going to do this. But I don't know that this is the next. I mean, what's the next step after this? What if this continues? What if there is a resurgence, God forbid? What if the number of deaths go up? Even though people have been isolated, trapped in their homes, given this, uh, uh, this, this confinement, this imprisonment, this, this uh, 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 solitary lockdown, what if the number of deaths go to eight or nine or 12? Is it worth it? Does it make a difference? Yes, every life matters. And there's 190,000, 193,000 people we have to consider. Their mental health, their economic health, their actual health. And everyone who's at risk all of their lives. And I think it's important. I absolutely believe it's important. But as part of the health the mental health, the physical health of people, they need to get outside, walk around the corner, walk around the block. That's why the golf courses are open, for people to be outside, to do something, to not be trapped in their homes. 
I don't know. Uh, I think Executive Garnar has gone a little too far. It's a little too extreme. It's a little too much. It's the straw that's breaking this camel's back. And I want people to be safe. I want people to be healthy. I want everyone to live. And I'm trying my best. I'm making sure. I want you to know, you know, no matter what, please remember there is help for those who have mental issues right now, who are feeling alone, who are depressed. Don't harm yourselves. Please make sure, reach out. There are a lot of ways to help people. And I'll say it again. Hey, there's the National Suicide Hotline. Please give them a call. You know, use social media to reach out to your friends, to talk to them. Use your phones, call people, send out texts. Stay in touch with people. Make sure you check on people, even people you haven't talked to in a while. I've reached out to people I haven't spoken to in years just to see how they're doing. And please, I'm here too. You know, send me text messages, whatever. I'm happy to hear those calls. Let's have that interaction. Let's make sure we're going to be together as a community all the way through this because I want you to be here at the end of this. But I also want to make sure that we have freedoms and that we have rights and that we have the ability to step outside and live. I don't think that's too selfish. I don't think that's too much to ask for. I don't think it's the wrong thing to do. I mean, I get it. I get it, Jason. I get it. Executive Garnar, I understand why you're doing it, but I don't think it's the right answer. I think it's too much. I think it's way too much. I think it's too far. And it has me concerned. Well, I've said it, I've repeated myself. You know what? Um, and I've got some, uh, there are some comments here. So let's see what they are. Uh, Vic Furman and others are watching. Thank you. Uh, Tina says, it has me so riled up. I agree. I understand that completely. Uh, Kevin mentions he agrees with me. Um, that he wants he wants to put it in writing. He doesn't agree with this. Uh, Renee Dean mentions that uh, not uh, 198,000 people live in Broome County. Actually, according to the census, it's 193,000. Um, and not all of them have been tested. Not even 50% have been tested. You're right. They haven't been tested. Uh, Renee, you have a great point. And are more people, do more people have coronavirus right now? Yes. Have people had coronavirus since October? Yes. Do we have to be careful, careful and cautious for all the people who are out there uh, that are, are susceptible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially the highest risk people, the people who are, you know, 70, 50 or older, people who have existing, pre existing issues like diabetes, hypertension, um, heart disease, kidney disease, cancer treatments. They're in the top groups of people who have been affected by this and uh, have, who have been susceptible and died because of it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Um, at the same time, there's panic and there's overreaction. And this is an overreaction, I think. Uh, Vic mentions, uh, he, th he says, happy birthday and that Atsunango Park is loaded uh, with people. And, and you know what? I'm glad people are going to Atsunango Park to walk around, to be able to be outside and not feel like they are in a prison and that their prison is their home. That's not healthy for people. It's a bad pattern to put into people's brains, into their hard wiring. So is the idea that you can only escape from your house every other day. Whether you need to for food and other things or just for yourself. So, and I thank everybody who is making comments and, and giving me your input. Overall, it seems like most people tend to agree. And I think it's, it's correct. It's too much. And I look forward to Executive Garnar, whether he does it privately or, you know, because you have my phone number, Jason, uh, but whether he contacts me privately or publicly, and I'm not attacking him. I don't want this to sound like I'm attacking him. 
I understand his concern and I agree with the concern that we want to take care of everyone. And I understand we want every single person to survive. But we've been doing that to make sure everyone will survive. And we have been successful. And I think we're going to continue to be successful. I don't see the need of this extreme additional step. It hurts, I think, more than it helps. It causes more issues than it resolves, I believe. Its long-term ramifications are huge. And I don't think they're positive. Not positive enough to equal what is being done. And so this is the pushback. This is the feedback from me. And maybe everyone's going to hate me for it. Maybe people are saying this is you just insensitive because I'm not. I appreciate and understand exactly, you know, what we're dealing with here. But there's just some things just aren't right. This, I don't believe, is the right thing. I don't know. Look, I need to get this off my sh- off my chest. I have not been political. I've been trying not to be political, and I want to be positive. And I understand and I appreciate Executive Gardner and what he's decided and why he did it. I get it. I don't agree with it. I think it's wrong. I think he should reevaluate it. But I appreciate that he's doing everything he can, even when it's too extreme. He's doing everything he can. We all are. But some things are just too much. Look, I'm going to go now. I will continue to look at the comments and see what other people think. And, and, you know, I'm part of the community. I will work with everyone the way they best think it is. And if everyone thinks that's the best way to go forward to protect everyone, I'm all for it. I don't think that's the answer. I don't think that's the best thing for our freedoms. I don't think that's the best thing for our mental health. I don't think it's going to have enough of an impact to help us more than what we've already done. But let's talk about it. Can't talk talk anywhere else. Let's talk here. Let me know what you think. Folks. I thank you. This is Michael Voss with no sound bites allowed. I hope everyone is going to be well. I know 99.999% of you are all going to be joining me throughout April 29th, May, June. You're all going to be here. I want you to be healthy and in as best a mood as possible through that. And I hope you don't hold it against me. As I just had to get this off my show, off my chest. I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you.